study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Back in our Father's Word, book of Ezekiel, L strengthens us. God strengthens us. That's the only two true strength there is, beloved. Remember that always. Our Father from chapter 24 through 32 in this book of Ezekiel told us of the Babylonian War, which means Satan's coming as the king of Babylon in the end times. It's going to happen in and to this generation according to the parable of the fig tree. So you want to be prepared for that. Then in the last lecture, we covered chapter 33, lacking two verses, which God said, I'm setting out watchmen. This is what you're supposed to watch for. And, and uh, then when we come to the 34th chapter, which we're going to cover today mostly, then he's going to tell you what to watch out for. So having said that, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you are one of those watchmen. You know he's coming, and you know you're going to witness against him with the Holy Spirit doing the talking. How precious it is and what a time to live. A word of wisdom from our Father, we ask it in Yeshua's name. Chapter 33, let's pick it up with verse 32 and finish the chapter of the watchman. And verse 32 reads, And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice. The truth always sounds good. And can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. And, and, and this is the way many people are. They love to hear, but they can't do. They won't do. And if you want God's blessings, you're going to be a doer. That's, that's what pleases him. Verse 33 to complete the chapter. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. You can count on it. The false one's coming. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Then they will know that you knew what you were talking about before the event came to pass. That's what a prophet is, is one that knows the events. And to teach the prophets or what the prophets teach is the Word of God. And the Word of God foretells us all things if you'll just take a little time and listen to our Father speak. Now, we come to chapter 34, and it's a very interesting chapter. This is what you're supposed to watch out for, okay? Verses 1 through 16 is to the false shepherds. That's fake preachers, preachers that don't take care of the sheep. If anything, they rip them off. And verses uh, 17 through 22 is the false uh, flock, that is to say the leaders of the flock, po political and uh, deacons otherwise, fakes. And then 23 through 30 it's the true shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in this particular chapter. These are the things you look out for. Chapter 34, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, To son of men prophesy against, not for, against the shepherds, the preachers of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves, should not the shepherds feed the flocks? I mean, this, you know, a shepherd tends sheep. A shepherd always provides pasture. That's why pastors are called pastor, because they're supposed to provide pasture for the sheep. That means to feed them. And you know something? Nature itself is always one of the best teachers there is, if you've ever had any experience in agriculture. I don't care if it's sheep or cattle. If you feed them, if you have a regular feeding place and you feed them, they will be there. It's the same way with people. Your church won't dry up if you'll feed them. Well, what do I feed them? Amos chapter 8, verse, uh, 20, verse 13. The famine in the end times is not for bread, but for hearing the word of God. Chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Feed them, and they will come. Verse 3. Talking again to the fake preachers. Verse 3, you eat the fat that belongs to God. You don't touch it. And you clothe you with the wool. You, you shave them down so they don't have anything left. 
you kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. Uh, and um, you take my sacrifices and you consume them all yourself. And But when it comes to feeding the flock the word of God, you don't turn a tap. Verse 4, the deceased um, have yet, have you not strengthened, you didn't take care of them. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. And, and so it is. You, you don't give them a break. You, don't, you might say, well, he's a nice man. If he does not teach you the Word of God, he's robbing you blind. If he does not teach you the Word of God, it's playing dangerously with your soul. Because as we learned in those nine chapters from 24 through 32, the false Christ is coming. And he's going to come before the Lord Jesus Christ does. If, if your preacher doesn't teach that, he's harming you tremendously. He's setting you up whereby you could actually, instead of wor worshiping Christ, worship Satan. That's how serious it is. Well, how serious is that? Well, if you worship Satan, you're going to hell. How's that? So it's very important that don't let somebody rip you off. If, if you go to a place and God's Word isn't taught chapter by chapter and verse by verse, you need to study yourself, okay, to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the Word of God. Verse 5, and they were scattered because there is no shepherd. They were without a shepherd, basically, a teacher. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. I mean, they, they became um, lost. God never has never lost anyone. The ten tribes that went north, they, some, some of them were lost. But without a shepherd to feed them, to talk about the migrations, but the blessings even with Christ, the true shepherd, which we will find in the 23rd and 24th verses of this same chapter, whomsoever will. Verse 6, my sheep wandered through all the mountains, that's nations, and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search nor seek after them. And it is true, the real truth of who God's, uh, uh, the house of Israel, the house of Judah, and the other nations, which we have studied in this, God doesn't leave anyone out. All nations are there. We covered every nation there is in those chapters 24 through um, uh, 32. God loves all of his children. But God is against preachers, teachers, priests, shepherds, so-called, that do not feed the Word of God to the, the uh, children. He doesn't like it. You can't blame him. Seven. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the Word of the Lord. This is what's going to happen. Eight. As I live, saith the Lord God, swearing by himself, surely, because my flock become a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherd search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. A uh, little, well, uh, this is a ministry here. Of, we, we don't really care about teaching God's Word chapter by chapter, but I do want all of you to say, uh, I'm, I'm mimicking now. Don't you think I'm saying this? All of you, if you want a blessing from God, send a $1,000 bill here to us. There's no such thing anymore, but be that as it may. Rip-off artists. I mean, they shear those sheep right down to where it hurts. They beg, and God, listen to me, it's real easy to spot them. God, as he would teach through the Son in the New Testament, when he said don't take script and don't take a purse, that means a begging bag. Don't you dare be representing my name and get out there and start begging. Well, if you're teaching God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, if you're feeding, you don't have to beg. You will never hear anyone beg, and you will never hear any 
so-called um, money raising program on this network, SCN. Why? Because we don't have to beg. Why? Because we feed the sheep. And people are wise enough to appreciate that enough that they keep us coming to them. Thank God for that. You've got to feed the sheep. Feed them and they will come. But they do need to hear the Word of God, and God insists on it. Christ became the living Word, and the Word, the word became flesh and walked among us. John chapter 1, verse 9. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 10. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that's from the lies that come from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Do you, do you know what he's talking about here? He's talk, you, you read it before we started, the nine chapters that tell for sure that the Antichrist is coming. He, he warns you what to be careful of. And he told you plainly, he said, these false teachers, even daughters of my own people, sew kerchiefs that cover every knuckle, every index, every digit of my outreach saving arms where you can't see the true salvation. Instead of seeing the salvation, the hands of Almighty God, what did they do? Verse 19, And will you pollute me among my people? This is chapter 13, same book. This is what he warned us about. For barley, uh, pieces, barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die, and to save the souls alive that should not live, by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Verse 20, This is the false teaching. Listen to it. Because thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, that's covering my saving hands, wherewith you there hunt the souls to make them fly with your rapture doctrine. And I will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go, even the souls that you hunt to make them fly. The, the, God is returning to this earth and he expects his true children to have on the gospel armor and to stand against the fiery darts of Satan when that false Christ appears. How precious it is. Is it any wonder that he's upset at his shepherds when they're even telling people, you don't have to understand the Word of God. You don't need to understand the book of Revelation. You're going to fly out of here. That's false. That is not biblical. And God will um, revenge that. You know, I'm glad that judgment starts at the pulpit because every time a man sets himself up as a preacher or a teacher, man or woman, doesn't matter, and you are deliberately or in ignorance misleading people by not doing your homework, you're going to answer for every sin those people commit on judgment day because you are the one that misled them. It's a pretty serious thing, and you want to think about it. Now, returning to chapter 34, next verse, we pick it up with verse 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, emphasis, will both search my sheep and seek them out. I'll find them. I know where they are. I haven't lost them. 12. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day, the time of, of Satan and heathenism that comes upon the world, false teaching, straight from Babylon. 13, and I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. In other words, the unwalled cities that I have set aside. I'm glad we have this great free nation. God provided it. There's, it's no accident that we're the superpower of superpowers. In God we trust. 
14, I will feed them in a good pasture. And upon the high mountains of Israel shall their foal be. That's, that's where they're going to graze. There shall they lie in a good fold. That means they've got peace. And in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. God said, I will feed them. And you know something? He feeds us very well from his word. If you'll only take the time to cover it, to absorb it, to hear it, to let it sink in, to meditate upon it. That's the, the word meditation comes from a cow bringing the cud up and chewing it over and over and over. Meditation, meditation, meditation on the Word of God, the will of God, the wishes of God. To do that, to better yourself, no, but to please God as well as bettering yourself. Fifteen, I will feed my flock, and I will, will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. In other words, when a flock can lie down, they're at peace. They know there's no danger. They know that they're safe from harm. And that's what our Father's Word does for you. Well, how could, how could we exercise that today? Well, it's real simple. If you've ever read Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he gives us power over all of our enemies and evil spirits, demonics in Christ's name. They run from you. And you can stay anywhere you wish as long as you use common sense and be safe knowing God loves you and that you have power over the enemy. Don't ever let him snow you. Okay? And never be afraid to exercise power that God gives you. Verse 16, I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick but I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. I'm going to give them everything they've got coming to them. Now, what our Father is saying here, those that weren't fed, those that were lied to, you know when this happens, it's the millennium. A lot of people said, well, you, just stop right there, brother. You're teaching a second chance. They did with what's taught by these fake shepherds. They haven't got a prayer coming out the gate. They're going to be deceived when Satan comes saying, I'm, I'm the Lord Jesus Christ and I've come to rapture you away. They're going to jump in his buggy. Okay? They're loaded and locked for it. They're taught it year in, year out. Unfortunately, it's not biblical. And you know something? Our Father doesn't like it. Our Father sends watchmen to take the real Word of God and to teach it, especially in this generation Hear the word of the Lord. He will feed them with judgment means they're going to get everything they got coming to them all at one time. 17, and as for, and here we start, that, that ends the first 16 verses of the false shepherds. Now we come to the so-called leaders are, are the false uh, sheep, those that set themselves up politically and or otherwise, and try to rip off the sheep. Listen to it. 17 through 22 will have this report. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle. I, I know your thoughts. Between the rams and the he-goats. And, of course, he-goats are those that are in charge, basically, prancing here and prancing there. Uh, you might say the so-called leaders of the people, not the preachers, politically and otherwise. 18. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk the, of the deep waters, but you must foul the residue with your feet, you, when, when you go through, you muddy stuff up so bad that the average person, the working person, can't get a decent bite out of it. And when it comes to water, you get in there and stir up with your feet the mud and the filth until they can get a, not get a decent drink. Well, what, what is he saying here? They don't care about the people. The so-called political leaders and otherwise, in large part, not all, we don't judge all of anything. 
But you know, I don't have to tell you, you know who's doing this. You know who it is that muddies the water. You know who it is that prevents many times, and through greed, that uh, they stomp on and walk on people to get ahead. Verse 19, and as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. It's all they got. Instead of having the Word of God taught to them chapter by chapter and verse by verse, all they get is a bunch of malarkey of men's imagination, traditions of men that make void the Word of God. Verse 20, Therefore thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, for emphasis, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. I know your thoughts. I know those scrawny uh, cattle that have been mistreated. Going to be a day of change coming. Verse 21, because you have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the diseased with your horns. No mercy till you have scattered them abroad. No sympathy, no compassion whatsoever. Every sign that one of God's elect has is compassion for each other. You don't show any sign of it. Verse 22, to finish the, the false sheep. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between the cattle and cattle. You're going to get what you got coming to you. You know, God is always fair. He even knows what you're thinking. You can't hide anything from him. Don't try to take advantage of his sheep. I mean, you be fair, God is fair. And sometimes tough love can seem like unfairness within itself. When it's called for, dish it out. It's necessary to keep peace. And so he does with these goats, these he goats, that likes to kick up trouble. He'll take care of it. Now, verse 23, we come to the true shepherd and how blessed that is that we've really got him, God's elect have him all the time. But this is what you watch out for. This is what the watchman was set on edge for. This is how you determine with knowledge and information concerning the true shepherd. Verse 22, <clears throat> Therefore will I save my flock and will no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. We got that? 23, and I will set up one shepherd <clears throat> over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. In other words, naturally, we're talking here about the Lord Jesus Christ through the lineage of David, out of the stem of Jesse. He would come. And this is our promise. This is our hope. And our Heavenly Father... Uh, so loves his children that he doesn't like to see them wooled around. He doesn't like to see them ripped off. And don't ever think for a moment he doesn't know. He certainly does. Whom he blesses, he blesses, and whom he curses, he curses. He allows Satan to work them over real good. Verse 24, And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken yet. I want you to make a mental note, because when we get to chapter 46, verse 1, I'm going to quiz you about this. Who is the prince spoken of here? You want to remember, David, a man, a man after God's own heart, little old David, though he did badly wrong in a few places, God still used him. Through him would come that seed the Lord Jesus Christ. But again, when we get to 46.1, I'm going to, I'm going to check, test your memory about the prince. Verse 25, And I will make with them a covenant of peace, not of war, not of Babel, of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land, and they, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. You know, many times that's unsafe. I'm going to fix it so that you can sleep anywhere and rest quite easy. It's going to be just fine. I'm going to take care of it. 
You know something? I believe that with all my heart, and uh, uh, and I know that that day is coming. I know right now, if if you have eyes to see, and if you're a watchman, God already has is covering you, whereby when you utilize common sense, learn from the Word of God, adhering to His promises, and not only being a hearer but a doer, He He sees to it. Verse twenty six, and I will make them. And the places round about my hill a blessing. That's the, all the, even the adjoining villages. And I will cause a shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessings. Not only the shower that sprouts the embryo in the ground, but the shower of the latter day rain that brings full knowledge and full flavor to the fruit of, that the very plant uh, uh, provides produces. It's going to be plenty of everything, but mostly plenty of our Heavenly Father's truth instead of, of, uh, of lies, deception, and having to decipher one from the other, weighing, well, is this person real or not? You don't ever want to worry too much about persons. Worry about the Word. Don't worry about it, but cover the Word of God, and then you'll know who to trust. There won't be any doubt about it. Verse 27, And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord, when I have broken the bands of their yoke, and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. Has that come to pass yet? You know very well it has not. You know that that is future, but it's going to come to pass. And our Heavenly Father is very much in control. How precious it is to have His Word, His command, and to know that He is in charge, that He is in control. And you are safe, served of themselves, of them, and there were no more false shepherds, no more false teachers, no more rip-off artists, no more people lying to the, God's children to mislead them. You know, this is something you want to be real careful of. A good psychologist can talk a mean battle and even be against Christianity and yet make people feel good by knowing how to play on the strings of their heart through, through psychology. But that doesn't make it true. You can pretty well tell by this. You know, you'll have people that will walk out of churches and they'll think, Oh, my, wasn't that a wonderful service? Like, well, what did you learn? Uh, hey, this is just wonderful. I just feel good. Now, what did you learn from God's Word? Well, I, I didn't learn anything, case made. What are you learning? What did you get from it other than feel good? That's what you want to think about. You want to take away truth, uh, knowledge, and understanding, knowing that Almighty God, is in control right today, and that if you love him and you're a doer of his word, he's going to bless you. You can count on it. So you want to beware and be watchful for those that like to play church and feel good little people in that little church next door. You know, if, it's, if the little church next door teaches God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, fantastic support it. If it doesn't, then you're in danger going there. Well, oh, brother, are you going against... No, that's not against Christianity. That's against false teachers. Verse 28. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen teachers, neither shall the beast of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. This word heathen here is a word you need to know. It's Goy. The Goy are the Kenites. Okay. Don't ever let anyone tell you any different. They're a small people that really come strong up with the false Messiah. And they're none other than his own children, the Goy. Many people that understand languages like to kind of uh, twist that around. And if you're not careful, they'll be calling you a Goy. You're not a Kenite uh, if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, even if you were born a Kenite. 
and you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you're a child of God, not a boy. So you don't, don't be ignorant concerning God's Word. It doesn't take you long to check that Word out in your Strong's Concordance and grow familiar with it. And from the book of Daniel, who does it say that the Antichrist becomes strong with the small people? Who is that small people? The Goy, which is none other than the Kenite. So I, I throw that in because God's Word is so precious. When you teach it with understanding, verse 29, to continue. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the goy, the heathen, anymore. Not, the Kenites are not going to bother them anymore. What is that, what is that plant of renown? It's the vine. It's Christ. And, and you are the branches that fit into that vine. And God is the pruner. You know that from the New Testament. He prunes off everything that doesn't make fruit. That's just common horticulture. And our Father loves His children. Verse 30, Thus shall they know that I, the Lord their God, am with them. And that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. How can you know that in a successful ministry that doesn't have to beg and strengthens the watchman to be prepared for that that is before us, teaching the events that consummate the end of this age where you are not caught asleep on watch? It's a terrible thing for a watchman to go to sleep on watch when other people are depending on him or her to keep the warning coming, even as they sleep. One more verse to complete the chapter, verse 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, God speaking, are men, Adam, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. End of story. That's the way it is. Our Father loves His children. He doesn't hide anything from us. It's there for the taking, the absorbing the understanding, even down to the consummation of the end of this age. Be a watchman and be not deceived. Father has blessed us with a, all a mighty, mighty platform. Use it. Enjoy it. But thank God for it. All right. Don't miss the next lecture. Bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please?